It is a pleasure to uh, recognize uh, two people who came all the way from Indianapolis, the president of the American Swiss Society, Professor Yesner, and Professor Seringer from, uh, from Indianapolis, from uh, the University of Indianapolis, Purdue University. I'm sorry. Would you please stand up? I'm talking, Nick of course, about IUPUI. That's what I'm talking about. It is my pleasure to introduce to you River, uh, like the to Consul General of Mr. Switzerland, um, Consul uh, General Arthur H. Burkert, who, of course, uh, JP? as a member of the JP Swiss Foreign Mid Service, has really here. served uh, is, all over uh, the world. Countries do include Brussels, Belgium, uh, he, he New York, us, he, Frankfurt, he Germany, uh, Monrovia, uh, Liberia, Berlin, Dublin, yeah, Ireland, Bangkok, in Thailand. In addition, for many years, he worked in human, humanitarian aid. And, uh, and since a few months, back, he is uh, here in this you, country, uh, not in well. New York, but uh, in the Windy City in Chicago. He's uh, responsible for the note. area in the many respects, the, uh, and the purpose of our, his visit here with our university uh, is multifold, to help to introduce the speaker of tonight, and I guess officially open our exhibit on Bern, the capital of Switzerland. And in addition to uh, meet other people related to the mission of uh, his office, uh, business, uh, maybe we even will have an art exhibit here in the near future. So without any further ado, it's a pleasure to introduce you to you, Consul General Burkhardt. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here in Muncie, Indiana, for several reasons. I'm particularly glad that we can show an exhibit on Switzerland, on the capital of Switzerland, because as I realize, Switzerland is not so well known as I thought in the Middle West. It's always get mixed up with Sweden. Um, and I'm particularly pleased that the exhibit you are going to see tonight, that also speech, is on Bern, on our capital. It's the second most wonderful city in the world. The most wonderful city in the world is 30 kilometers south of Bern. That's Toon, that's where I'm from. Skyline, thank you. I also Magazine. have to excuse myself for not having been on time today for the tea party, having driven from Chicago to the snow. And uh, there are jokes about the Bernese people for always being late. One of these jokes is saying, of course, incorrectly, that if you tell a Bernese a joke on Friday, he will laugh in church on Sunday. So never tell a joke to the Bernese on Friday. It gives me great pleasure to introduce tonight's speaker. He comes from Bern, of course. He was born there. He went to school, and at the young age, after finishing his study, his basic studies in Bern, at the young age of 20, came to the United States. Uh, went again to school in Chicago at the in the Illinois Institute of Technology. Uh, got a degree in architecture in '59, and his master degrees in city planning, also at the Illinois Institute of Technology in '61. He is now and has been for many years professor at the same institute. And as a, a real Bernese, one of his hobbies is, of course, and his love still belongs to his hometown. He has studies and made research about Bernese settlements in the United States, and he came up so far, he's still working on it, but so far he found about 53 
places in, uh, of, uh, with the name of Bern in the United States. And as I understand, the uh, crowd about 80% of all these places, is that correct? He visited 80% of these 50G, so 80% of 50G is quite a large number. So he is the authority on Bern, certainly. And I'm pleased that he's going to talk to you tonight and showing uh, our capital, Bern. So I would like, with no further comment, please, I would like to introduce to you Professor Schmocker. Thank you. Because I need a free hand. My roof took me by a I don't like to disagree with a politician and a certain somebody from the diplomatic corps, but occasionally it is necessary. I will dispute with him very greatly that the two most beautiful cities are in reverse order from what he just told you. Bern comes first and then Thun. But that's maybe my opinion, but my opinion counts. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, I will have to uh, sort of squint and look a little bit. I apologize. My eyesight is perhaps not exactly the best in the world anymore, but that's the way it goes. Uh, of an hour. Can we get same, started? This long way was a trip through alien cultures and also a journey into the past. Whoops. If I, if I lift it up, I can't it's see it. I... Old Bern and New Bern, the emblems of the city as they have changed also from today, early days to today. Work is done to the pyramids. Oops, hold on, I got this wrong. Once oh. again, going far beyond any kind of reconstruction, I think nobody knows. Eventually I get it straight. See, over here, right is left and left is right. But uh, it'll work. Just give me a few seconds. Bern, the capital of Switzerland, is a city planned and built in the 12th and 13th century. The city is located in the heart of Europe and appears for the first time on a map drawn by Idrisi in 1154. And all I said, oh my God, he put the sliding upside down. That is really not the case. You all know north is up. And that's how I did it. What happened? I didn't touch anything. Oh, okay, there. So, Bern is that black dot in the middle, which says Berna in Latin. Bern, it's totally distorted. The uh, Adriatic Sea, I think it's even mirror image reversed. So, sort of turn your head around a little bit. Excuse me, shouldn't happen, but unfortunately it did. The city was founded by the Duke Berchtold V of Seringen over a period. Oops. What happens? There we go. Appears for the okay by John Duke Berchtold the fifth of Saringen over a period of a hundred years, and he was the fourth member of a family of city founders. They were responsible for the creation of twelve towns and city in southern Germany and Switzerland. The city's beginning grew out of the castle. And by grew out of the Castel Nidek at the tip of a peninsula in the Ar River. 
It extracted taxes and guarded the intersection of river and overland trade routes. English is not that good. The uh, number one on the left side is the Castle Garden Moat. The number two, the adjoining supporting settlement, and then three, the river and overland roads, and number four is the drawbridge over the moat. So this is a simple beginning from the 12th century. Today, the simple beginning of over 800 years ago is still very visible in the building and street layouts of the present decide. building. Street, uh, the present buildings up. now Please follow approximately the shape and location the of the protective the walls of the old castle. I will not demonstrate through that building has to be. either back or foresighted a sumptuous arrangement of international set pieces and citations. In 1218, shortly after the death of the city's founder, the last male member of the Saringer family, when he died, the citizen of Bern declared themselves free of any overlord. overlord. They became self-governing under the direct protection of the German emperor. The castle was destroyed and a new church built around the former castle's chapel took its place. This, like many other historical events throughout the city, there we go, is represented and explained to the public through wall plaques showing the city's growth, change, and heritage. For instance, the solid colors are existing remains of that castle and uh, walls, drawbridge and gates. The cross-hatched lines are where one was reasonably sure the remains were because of previous documentations that have now been removed and the dotted line are simply assumptions because one simply does not know where the original swan walls went and followed. This physical interlocking of the past and the present is clearly visible at the base. Here, I also touch personal At the base, when it concerns of the Martin church where part of the former land. castle's when southwest when corner include, support up, the asp the and the tower of the church. Let's During see if a I can get process, it. it. There it is. So this corner here on the uh, tower the of the church is the other corner. The church is superimposed on that project. drawing and it's on the lower left-hand corner of the church. So this constant interlocking and growth and evolution in the formation of the city as we have it today can be traced throughout the city. In the early 13th century, the ferry across the Ar River at the foot of the Nidek was replaced with a permanent at first, one bridge. No. Growing energy, pleasure, sadness. I have something wrong here, excuse me. The pit. Uh, there it is. Of a fascinating rock landscape east of Austria, from part of the Italian border. The ferry gate remained for a long time a visible feature of the city. 
But in the early 19th century, it seemed to have to disappeared completely, only to be rediscovered in 1959 in the basement of an old building that had to give way for an urban renewal project. The gate was restored and is now incorporated into a public park and rest area under the new apartment building. No. I will put has to be over, over there, that hole in the wall, that is the public the park with the gate uh, underneath, and then the apartment building was built very, over it uh, in the process the protecting the, the old gate from further deterioration. Written and pictorial documentations of historical of events point, often occur many years, sometimes centuries after the fact. For instance, the chronicles of Diebold Schilling of 1485 give for the first time a pictorial image of the construction of this first wooden bridge across the Aar River, an event that occurred over 200 years earlier. You find my name no. Too often, many Can I go back one on the left uh, side? Feuerstein says architecture is life. Or shall I do it? Let me see if I can. There we go. The, force of human existence the blank out is on purpose over there. Due to territorial disputes with the Kiborg neighbors, the in-laws of the former Saringer family, any permanent river crossing had to have massive fortifications, including watchtower, moat, and drawbridge. No. What do we have here? It seems as no. if the primary sources of architecture have been buried inside of such as the bridge in stone construction since 1461 still exists today. Till the early 19th century, it was the only access to the city from the east. With the growth of the city, this created increasingly severe traffic problems. To alleviate these pressures, Niklaus Sprungli, one of the renowned architects of the city, proposed in 1758 to double-deck the bridge. This project never materialized, and it took nearly an additional 100 years before, in 1843, uh, these traffic problems were resolved with the construction of a second, higher, and larger toll bridge. The original lower bridge, now minus all its fortifications and guardhouses, became again what it once was, the access to the small settlement near and around the original castle site. Of the bridge's fortification, only the tower on the east side, the so-called Felsenburg, remains. In 1862, the city sold this tower into private ownership, and the whole structure was converted into a five-story apartment building. That's that tower to the left of the bridge. Here is the tower with the apartment buildings as it is today. The first planned city section the first Borgom is thought to be from around 1160.
we don't know for sure. There are no documentation to prove it or state it. The only thing we have this map from Idrisi from 1156 where it shows a name that could be burned. So these are simply guessworks when you go back that far. And it is a planned city, as I told some of you earlier today. It is city planning, it's not a 20th century profession, but it goes back probably even before Bern and other cities in Europe. Uh, this was planned very clearly by making lots 100 foot by 60 foot in depth and organizing them two lots, a street right of way, two lots, a street right of way. So there is a clear grid over the landscape placed and then adjusted to the contour lines and of the city or of that peninsula. And between the top of the peninsula and the river edge or river le level, you have a 150 foot height difference. So it might be very difficult if you just did it as a geometric exercise. So there was this adaption to the natural site. Like in most cities of the 12th century, the city is separated by moat and drawbridge from the protective castle. Here the uniqueness is the reversal of their normal positions to each other. Here the new settlement, rather than the castle, looks down and over the other one. In other words, the castle is much lower near the river, and as it goes up on the peninsula, the city was built above it. Let me see that slide. Okay. The basic plan of the city is simple. It consists of a grid of 100 by 60 foot burn feet, uh, lot sizes, and uh, the burn feet tend to be a little bigger than most other people's feet, so it's probably closer to 105 feet in total length. Two back-to-back -back grid units are building sites with the next one becoming the street right-of-way. This first settlement, due to the necessity of geographic adaptations, consisted probably of no more than 49 lots and was no more than 1,000 by 600 feet or about 300 free city blocks as we know them in Chicago in size. Part of the original building requirements included a provision that along the street frontage, continuous building fronts without any interruptions had to be erected. This often resulted in further subdivisions, at times as small as one-sixth or one-fifth of the original 100-foot lot, giving parcels of 16 and a half feet or 20 feet by 60 feet in size. Here, too, this early beginning is still manifest in a continuous, compatible building front. It is not a monotonous uniformity. Each building is unique and individualistic, and by no means does it deny any self-expression. Here is a quote in a letter by Goethe, from 1779 about the city of Bern, a letter he wrote to a Mrs. von Stein. The city is the most beautiful we have seen. See, even Goethe thinks so. The houses are built in civic unification, each similar to the other, each out of grayish soft sandstone. The Quality and the purity within is a joy to the eyes, 
especially because one senses that nothing is empty decoration or the mediocrity of tyranny. Many of the city's buildings could be singled out. Here are only two, but rather unique examples. The first combined two residential buildings, and it was combined in 1516, and, and a late Gothic facade was added, and it combined a former convent and adjacent residential building into a single larger residence. The only way you can basically tell from the outside is that unequal arch sizes. So this was one building on the right and the second building on the left with the two smaller arches. So these are sort of the clues and hints that you see all over the city, how the city has evolved into something else. Also, obviously, when you go into the interior, then you find bearing walls where you expect regular partition walls. And when you piece all that together, then it becomes much clearer. The wall mural was added only in 1897, and it gives a, a genealogical chronology of all the building's owners starting with the Fraubrunn Convent of 1335, which is the woman sitting on a throne there in the middle. So that was the first known owner, ending up with the uh, Serlater family of the early 1800s. The other building, a very modest building, was a for, for a long time the residence and studio of the one of the more illustrious artists of the early 20th century. That has to be. Oops, that was too early. Anyway. The inscription under the Parade of Life, which this is up here from Cradle to grave, and then there is an inscription underneath, reads as follow. Here reigns beauty and taste. Here it smells pleasantly of paste. Here one works with oil and plaster. Here lives Friedrich Trufflet, painting master. The side entrance, unfortunately, illustrates one of the occasional tragedies in life. The original first moat, city gate, and fortified defense walls remain today only in the form of a gap Oops, now it's going the other way. I'm going to screw up, excuse me. Let me see. This gets tricky. As I said before, left is right and right is left for me. That's right. Let's leave it. Safe is safe. So the gap, you, uh, that very narrow gap between the buildings from upper left to lower right is that cross street gives the only hint today the, of the original size of the city. The third and many times altered city hall or rot house dominates this portion of the city. 
The first city hall building on this site was built after the big fire of 1405 that virtually destroyed the entire city and it was built of the, over the foundation and ruins of a mint and several residential buildings. It also incorporates on its west side part of the original inner city wall and under the adjacent uh, street, there, let's see if I can get it. No, I'm having trouble here. So the original city wall is here on the left, which then became part of the city hall. The re rectangle up on the upper left-hand corner is an original tower in the city for fortification. And the only way you can see it today, if you're a little mole and can go underneath the street, that is following the side of the building today. Bern, the eventually largest city-state north of the Alps, was governed into the late 18th century from this building. The building's present appearance is the consequence of extensive renovation work in 1939 when an attempt was made to return its looks to that of an earlier day. Oh, great. This time it works. The elaborate neo-Gothic facade of 1865 disappeared again. The second city segment, or second Burgum, was also planned and built by the city's founder. It is now clearly established that the city was completed up to this point by the year 1191, the city's official birthday. The settlement is now double in size and it ends at a natural gu gully cutting across the Ard River Peninsula. So the number one is the gully of the Tanners, number two, the gully of the bathhouses, so I've obviously running plumbing, water, and bathtubs in each house was not quite the vogue in the 13th century. Frieden is the main city gate, and four and five are a couple of side gates. This new addition continues the standard 100 by 60 foot lots. This time, 64 homesteads, again cut up into smaller lots, are contained within the new set of protective walls. The city now has a population of approximately four to 6,000 people. A cross-section through the buildings showed a remarkable concern for sanitation. In the middle of the street are two types of water supply. You have a creek that was diverted from outside the city and runs down the middle of each street, an open creek that is used for livestock, for washing, for scrubbing floors, and for, for that purpose, then within each block, there are two to three fountains that are deep well fountains that have been dug down as far as 150 feet, and that was the drinking water supply. In addition to that, the sewage lines were collected in a culvert or wooden pipe system 
in the middle between two lots way to the right separating sewage lines, water lines, and then two types of water lines separating all that from each other. This, it is assumed that the early buildings of the city were most likely half timber construction and only two to three stories in height. The arcades, if any, were probably shed roofs not unlike the covered wooden sidewalks of the early western towns in the United States. One of the oldest building codes in the world demanding fireproof masonry construction for all exterior building walls was the consequence of this disastrous fire in 1405 that nearly destroyed the entire city. Continuous space pressures eventually allowed the extension of the building fronts over the arcades and into the original street right of way. The arcades were the symbols of a market town that was designated as such by the German emperor. Few of the early half-timber houses with wood beam and column arcades exist today. Already by the early 17th century, they seem to have disappeared completely. Let me no, that was the wrong one. See, this is the, all in 1605, this map dates, or 1604, and you can't see any more of these wooden uh, arcades with column and beam. With acquired wealth, and Bern was a very wealthy city, comes the beautification of the buildings with Renaissance fronts and often the addition of a fourth floor to the building's height. The drawing on the right was done in 1948, but it's the same section of the city, roughly, uh, 16, what is that, 350 years apart. The dominant element in the major east-west axis of this part of the city, attracting thousands of tourists from all over the world, is the clock tower or Zeitglocke. The lower portions of the tower are the remains of the original city gate of 1191. This is uh, uh, from a chronicle from 1510 on the right side, how the clock tower actually looked, uh, but hopefully when it was first built. And then on the left is a cross section as it is today with the lower heavy masonry portion being from the original city wall, and as it goes up, later and later additions. Shortly after 1256, the city facing open side, in other words, it only had walls on three sides, was closed in, and the watchtower was converted into the city jail. The upper thin wall portions are from the second half of the 15th century, the sweeping roof of 1771. And that finishes the tower as we see it today. The, the earliest known clockwork of the tower 
originates shortly after 1405. Today's appearance, virtually unchanged since 1530, is the work uh, of Caspar Brunner, a local gunsmith. It includes an astronomical calendar, the seal of Berchtold V of Saringen, the city's founder, an animated carousel, and the golden fictional Hans von Tann striking with his mallet each hour nearly without interruption for over 450 years. One of the more colorful elements of the city are its fountains. They are not only the remains of a simple earlier water supply system. Uh, let me see if I can find what I want. Since the early 16th century, they have increasingly become a means to embellish the city with figures of religious, like Moses and Samson, fictional, uh, let me see, got them. Fi yes, I'm, I'm sorry. Fictional uh, characters, an ogre eating children, an allegorical ones like, uh, no, like justice on the, on the one side and often also of historical origins. Many of these fountains are the work of Hans King an artist from the neighboring city of Fribourg, a city, sister city founded in 1157, also by the Saringer family. Few of today's buildings, and let me see if I can, I still have trouble with my buttons here. Few of today's buildings give any real notion of the city's original Gothic appearance. Most of what exists today comes to us from the 16th century or later. In addition, the great majority of these buildings have the fenestration and proportions of facades added in the 18th and 19th century. Some rare exceptions are a few remaining arcaded half-timber houses and stucco houses of the mid-16th century. Of the once plentiful projecting bay windows, only a handful remain. The bay window of the May House, built in 1514, is probably the most elaborate and unique. It was added as a means to visually unite two adjoining buildings into one. The neo-Gothic third floor and the high roof are a later addition from 18. 95. This is the support figure underneath that huge bay windows and if for several hundred years I had to hold up that whole structure 
I think I will make a face just like this man does. From every direction, burn skyline is dominated by its cathedral. It is a late Gothic structure begun in 1421 under the direction of Matthias Ensinger of Strasbourg. Previously, he was the architect for the cathedral in Ohm in Ohm. Unforeseen foundation problems left the tower till 1893 without the top third of its spire. The location within the densely built up area is on top of Burns First Cemetery and two previous smaller churches. Okay. So you see the foundations of the smaller churches than the big cathedral, and that was built over an original cemetery. The first and smallest church originally outside the walled-in city, in other words, outside the first section of the city, dates from 1156 or 60, the probable founding year of the first planned city unit. The second larger church, now within the city proper, dates from 1277 to 1280. Okay. The greatest portion of the large plaza in front of today's cathedral only became a rea reality in 1490 and then also in 1506 when several houses adjoining the former cemetery walls were simply removed to create that larger plaza. You, you see the cemetery walls coming way out and all these dotted lines up to the cross-hatched area was removed to create that plaza in front of the church. In addition to the architect, other trades as well as goblins and monsters have been immortalized as support brackets for sculptures of angels and saints. Many of these were unfortunately destroyed during the Reformation movement when religious images were considered against the tenets of the church. Luckily, the main gate showing heaven on one side and the much more animated hell, as well as many of the stained glass windows could be preserved. The second expansion of the city, the Savoy city, occurred in 1256. It again more than doubled the previously walled in city area. This happened nearly 100 years after Burns' modest beginning and during a time when the city was under siege by the Dukes of Keyboards. And I guess, you know, the in-laws never give up. This expansion is also known as the New City or the Savoy City basically and now encloses unplanned sprawl along the main exit roads leading from the city. This enlargement of the fortified city walls was built while Bern placed itself under the protection of Peter II of Savoy. 
in the Chronicles of Diebold Schilling of 1485, he is referred to as the second founder of the city. Although the previously clear interrelationship of lots, streets, and site is missing, this portion still remains, at least in its facades, the same visual unity, the unity of the styles of the 18th and 19th century that the original two portions of the city manifest. In this portion, historic preservation only protects the fronts of the buildings. This creates sometimes bizarre solutions where the street side is carefully preserved, like the scenery in a play, and the interior and backs ignore the building's heritage completely. Same building. Except for a few fragments of the defense wall and a small tower, nothing remains of the original fortifications. Already in 1639, the original city gate was completely taken down and replaced by a new jail tower. And, that, and the jail tower, the new one, was moved a grand total of 13 feet further to the west. The city map of Sickinger of 1603 shows the original out of heavily remodeled tower. And there you can see the roof is completely different. It has a hip roof where this is a pointed roof. And this whole new tower is moved 13 feet further to the left. It is assumed that the 13th century city gate, like all previous towers, had battlements in lieu of a peaked roof and walls on three sides only. Today's appearance is virtually unchanged since its rebuilding. Instead of prisoners, it later housed the archives of the city government, and today it is an exhibition and tourist information center. After 1513, the only remaining open moat section was turned into the first bear pits of the city. Since then, bears, Burns, name giver and symbol of strength, have been continuously kept except for the 12 dark years after 1798 during Napoleon's occupation when General Schauenberg unceremoniously shipped them off to Paris. And that's not it. Where is it? disappeared. Schauenberg disappeared. Today, let me try this. There he is. And so if you go to Paris and to the zoo in Paris, keep in mind the bears in the Paris zoo are descendants of the bears he captured and Napoleon captured and carted off to Paris. Since 1857, after several relocations, the bear pits now seem to have found a permanent home near the old castle Nidek, where the city began. 
So if you ever go to Switzerland, please go to Bern, and we gladly sell you the feed so you can feed these hungry creatures that we have in a bear pit. So they will do all kinds of things for you, and so you will be greatly rewarded for your generosity. The Hollander or Dutch Tower, for a long time a prominent part in the city's vistas, was always thought to be an unusually elaborate stair tower that to air is human only showed up in 1975 during extensive renovation work. To the surprise of everyone, it was discovered that the tower was an actual part of the 13th century defense system. Naturally, without the, ha the half-timber house on top, that was added only in 1685. The key to unlocking this puzzle were tiny fragments of adjoining walls and the small cross-shaped shooting slots for crossbow arrows near the top. You can see it, that little cross. That was the key that it was actually a defense element in the city wall. The earliest written documentation of this tower dates from 1623, nearly 400 years after it was built. Today's name, Dutch Tower, arrives from 1695 after the return of Bernese professional soldiers to the Dutch army. The tower room was used by them to indulge in socializing and according to the local press, the smoking of the sinful tobacco leaves. The narrow row of buildings to each side of the old city gate were originally built between the two parallel city walls and existed as early as the late 15th century. These small-scale buildings and facades survived until 1935 before they had to give way to newer and more modern buildings. Another survivor into the early 20th century was a building of an urban adaptation of the more rural chalet building system. It lasted till 1906. Since then, it has been replaced twice. The latest one, a rather nondescript building of the late 1960s. Only a few years longer, till 1913, lasted another row of buildings nearby, this time to be replaced by a rather bulky Art Nouveau Workers' Palace and Hotel. Besides the cathedral, the other dominant structure in the city skyline is the Parliament Building of the Swiss Republic. It is a relative newcomer and was erected between 1851 and 1914. Previous to 1729, the greatest portion of this site 
was used as a cemetery. Where is it? No, I'm not. There it is. This is the identical site where these rectangular areas is part of a cloister and cemetery where now the parliament building stands. Particularly the portion of today's east wing has a long and changing history. Let's see if I can get it. Nope. Still no luck. Well, from 1323 on, it was the site of a Dominican convent that replaced an older, an older former Jewish cemetery. And after the Reformation in 1528, the site and buildings were converted to a city hospital. And for many years, the original convent church and chapel was used as a granary an okay, on occasion as an armory. The plaza to the north in front of the building, parliament building is probably one of the most active places in the city. Not only does it serve as a parking place for cars and buses, but twice a week it is used as a farmer's market. Suspect on occasion as a parking place for movable, non-parking signs. The fortification walls for the third expansion of the city, the so-called outer new city, were completed in 1346 about 150 years after its beginning. The enormous entrenchments and earthworks to the west are the consequences of the last improvements to the defense system of 1622 to 1634. To the this also indicates that the city had virtually no growth over the next 300 year period of its existence. And I think to a large extent, the plague probably played a role in this. It seems somewhat ironic, but this newest portion of the city has the least hint historical continuity. Unlike earlier expansions, not even the city gate dedicated to St. Christoffel, the saint for the travelers survived to the present time. It was the tallest of all the city gates and it dominated the street scene for many centuries. The tower was increased in height in 1467 for the first time and in 1683, it reached its final height of 200 feet. To ease the traffic congestion in and out of the city, the citizens of Bern decided in 1865 with a vote of 415 to 411 to level the tower. So four votes. So if you think not voting makes no difference, think again. To pacify the very vocal preservationists of the time, the head a 
hand and a foot of the nearly 30 foot tall wooden figure was saved and put on display in a local historical museum. The rest was given to the poorhouse for firewood. Today, a copy of the head again guides the travelers, this time to the catacombs, to the exits of a brand new railroad station. To be fair, the removal of this city gate did ease the traffic temporarily and did create a large plaza showing off the until now nearly hidden Holy Ghost Church of 1729 by Niklaus Schilknecht. Let's see what I'm getting there. The church is considered to be one of the most beautiful Protestant Baroque churches in Switzerland. The tower has an incredible likeness to one proposed by Niklaus Sprüngli in 1758, 30 years later, for the old Niedek church, where the or original castle was at the other end of the city. If it was meant as an anchoring tower at op opposite, e opposite ends of the city is pure speculation, although symmetry is part of the Renaissance style. 1228 is the earliest documentation of a small chapel at this site. It was part of, again, a convent and a hospital complex. That's a little church next to the Christoffel Tower and the enclosure. That is the, from 1228, we know it existed. In 1495, this first chapel was replaced by a larger church that was in continuous use for 230 years before giving way to the present structure as we see it today. In 1715, the hospital complex was separated from the church administration and a short time later, in 1742, it was moved to a new community hospital a few hundred yards to the west. To this day, this building remains virtually unchanged, but outside its walls, the environments have in undergone radical transformations. First, the horse baths, the, the uh, water in front of it, changed to a water font. Then, the coming of the streetcars forced a conversion to a grass mall heavily laced with steel tracks. Today, we not only have a more elaborate highway or racetrack system around it, but also a bigger and better central bus and streetcar terminal and a brand new railroad station. So this is, but the building on the left, sort of in the middle of the part, that is the old hospital of 1742. Over centuries, the details of Bern have certainly changed, and sometimes drastically, and not always for the best. But I'm equally convinced that every city must change if it wants to survive. No city can stand still and become a museum. It must stay alive and meet the needs of the present. 
but every effort must be made to preserve the feeling, the spirit, the fabric, and the sense of what it once was or from where it has come. A city must retain a strong imprint of its past and its history, and that is certainly burn today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, what we have heard in a relatively short period of time is not only a lesson in history, a lesson in uh, history of architecture, city planning, but I think uh, what impressed me most is the promotional effort as far as tourism is concerned. I'm convinced that I'll put Bern, and I have to add also Thun, because it's located on a wonderful lake to the itinerary. Um, it is very nice that uh, Professor Schmocker will be here a little longer than our visitors usually. He'll be here also tomorrow and visit some classes. And I suggest that we sort of have just a few questions and hopefully answers for Professor Schmocker. He will be around in the gallery uh, next to his exhibition, and I think there is still some coffee left. I have forgotten something at the very beginning. I recognized our visitors uh, from Indianapolis, but I'm wondering, did anybody come from Bern, Indiana? Anybody who made it? Yes, somewhere, somebody back there, I suppose. So thanks to all people who came uh, this long distance at a typical spring snowstorm uh, here in Indiana. In case there are any questions, uh, I think Professor Schmocker will be happy to take them. Well, let's have the questions outside. Thank you very much.